This is an installation by Nigerian British artist Yinka Shonabare from 2001. He is very interested in the 1700s and 1800s, in particular because of his life story. Um, he was the son of Nigerian parents, but he was born in England in the 60s. I forget exactly what year. But then he, uh, when he was little, like two years old, his parents brought him back to Nigeria and he really grew up in Nigeria. Then he went back to Britain to go to school and he went to art school. And he says that um, it was while he was at school that one of his teachers said hey you know you're from Africa like why don't you incorporate something about Africa into your art so the thing that inspired him after he started doing some research was the fabric that he uses and that's what a lot of his pieces are really known for this is the one in your image set it's two different pictures of it but this it's called the swing after Fragonard and we'll get to how he appropriate, appropriates Fragonard's The Swing for this. But let me show you some of his other art. So you can see it's pretty typical. Oops. Um, pretty typical for what Shonabari does. Everything, well, I don't know if it's literally everything, but it looks like everything I've ever seen by him has the uh, this material in it. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a and guy. And that person's headless. Most of them are headless. Mm -hmm. See, Look at that guy. Why are most of them <laughs> headless? That's the way this guy likes to do it. Yinka that guy has a ball on his head. That's true. Up oh, there's the fox guy again. That one is about a revolution called the Arab Spring. And he's showing how they have a gun in one hand, like fighting, but also a cell phone. It's actually a Blackberry, but it was like an early-ish kind of form of cell phone in the other hand. So they fought with weapons although i think that might actually represent one of the bad guys guns but <clears throat> and phones cell phones really helped with that revolution and they were sly sly like foxes oh thanks lou do you like the material all of his stuff has really cool fabric So Shonabare was uh, inspired by fabric that he found that he had always thought was just traditionally African fabric. However, it turns out once he did some research that the fabric was connected to uh, colonialism, like when Africa was colonized. So in particular, the fabric that he uses is kind of like a batik, like sort of thickish, um, very colorful material. And it was made by the Dutch for the Indonesian market. And they had, I guess they had a lot of it or something. So they sold a bunch of it in Africa for pretty cheap. So it became a staple in Africa. So something that people often traditionally think of as African isn't even African in origin. But that's what inspired him. And he really liked that about it um, because a lot of his art has to do with contemporary issues, but a lot of it arising from um, when Africa was colonized in the 1700s and 1800s. So this material is kind of perfect for that. And the, that goes along with a lot of his themes in his art. So now we can go back... Actually, let me go over to here. And you can see Shonabari's The Swing after Fragonard versus Fragonard's The Swing actually from the 18th century, which is also in our image set, by the way. 
This is the creepy one with the dude, the Baron, um, Bishop pushing Madame on a swing. And Baron St. Julian, the one who commissioned the painting, the patron, hooking up her dress. Um, and her slipper flying off and Cupid saying shh and he's offering her, her his tri-cornered hat. I mean, she can't actually see it, but it's all symbolic. Hi, Lou. Um, so what Shonabari does is he <clears throat> creates the same thing, but he uses the Dutch wax fabric that he's come to love so much. And... <clears throat> he makes it an installation, so it's in three dimensions, and you can walk all around it, and you can be the sketchy guy in the bushes or the bishop pushing the lady if you'd like. I wouldn't like that, but <clears throat> what do you think, Lucy? Which one would you want to be? The guy in the bushes? <laughs> oh, that's nice, honey. I want to be the lady on the swing. No, wait, I don't. That's gross, too. I want to be Cupid. I just want to hide up there. <laughs> so um he's explores these themes too with a lot of his headless mannequins <coughs> excuse me as you can see the woman here in shonabari's the swing after fragonard is headless and if you go back and take a look at a lot of his other sculptures they are headless as well why are they headless Ah, good question, Lo. They are headless because it's supposed to be a play on um, how, in this one in particular, the French Revolution was a revolution against the excess of the uh, <coughs> French, <coughs> excuse me, nobility. <coughs> so... Then when the French Revolution happened, the lower class people chopped off the heads of the nobility. They really did. Yep, they were pretty mad. They were, they were a little bit angry about that. A little bit, yeah. So what this guy does is he wants to remind people of that. And so his figures are... Ooh, this looks like an Adam and Eve one. Um, so his figures are headless to sort of say, hey, the people who do the bad stuff and treat the poor people badly, bad stuff happens to them. So watch out. Just like in his version of The Swing, which I like a lot better than Fragonard's. It's cooler because it doesn't have the creepy dudes in it, so it makes it less sketchy. And this is a video I found of Shonabari talking about his work. Thought was interesting. Come on. So the way that I make my work is that I start from sketches, or I also start from research. Uh, if there are issues I'm particularly concerned about, then look for ways of representing those. See, there's some of the material but that But then the actual um, making of them, I have a studio in which I work with different craftspeople. I work with costumiers and sculptors and so on. And then so I design uh, what I want made, and then I have design meetings with the various people who might make different parts of the project. Part of the reason, by the way, that Yinka Shonobare is in a wheelchair and one of the reasons that he has other people help him realize what he wants to make a lot um, is because he, when he was, I think he was 19 years old, 18 or 19, he contracted a virus that left him partially paralyzed and I think it actually continues to... Um, make his health deteriorate. I mean, he's still doing pretty well and he still makes amazing art, but that is part of the reason that he needs uh, extra help with it. So never be afraid to ask for help. Let's see. Let me get this playing again. Acquisition of my work, line painting by the Arts Council, 
came at a very good time in my career. It was very useful. Plus, of course, I, I could do with the money as well. That, that was, you know, that was good. That kind of validation is very um, important for a young artist because you're being encouraged to, um, you know, continue doing what you're doing. And you know that it's a good collection. The work will be looked after. I mean, some private collectors, of course, do look after the work, but uh, you know that something like the Arts Council will support you and uh, and look after the work, you know, for a longer period of time. I'm very glad that the Arts Council have come back uh, to collect another piece. The crowning is actually, it's a political work. It's visually seductive and very beautiful, but it's really about what we're going through in the world at the moment because that piece is a parody of the at this one too by the way this is actually pretty similar to uh the swing after fragonard and as you'll see him mention in a minute he based it on another fragonard painting he really seems to like fragonard or at least likes appropriating his work the, what was happening actually in France in the 18th century and the the crowning is actually based on a painting by the French artist Fragona, a Rococo artist. The thing about the sculpture, they don't have heads. And that was also a joke about the kind of, you know, the excesses just before the French Revolution and the way the French aristocracy lost their heads to the guillotine. Often I like paradox in my work. On the one hand, there's the desire for the beauty of the work, but then there's a degree of darkness behind that beautiful facade. At the time that work was made, people were really concerned about the gap between the rich and the poor, and even more so today, you know, the billionaires and so on, and then there are people who can now hardly afford housing. When I was at college here, you know, I had a lot of interest in international politics and I basically was making work at that time about what was going on in Russia at Perestroika. And one of my teachers said, but you're of African origin, aren't you? Why aren't you producing authentic African art? And it, it was actually at that point I started to use the fabric in my work because I felt that the story of the fabric is very interesting. I always thought the fabrics were authentically African, and then I realized that actually the fabric has a complex history, which is, you know, Indonesia and Dutch, and then, you know, Africa as well. So it's about the construction of stereotypes. That's cool Primarily, fabric, isn't it? That's why I started using the fabrics, because the fabrics for me, uh, they've become a symbol of the, the myths that we construct for ourselves. So overall, Yinka Shonabari is well known for how he comments on contemporary politics, but at the same time weaves in the history um, as well, <laughs> particularly from the 17 and 1800s, but also makes it in this way that's sort of like fantasy. It's funny, but it's an important, really difficult topic at the same time and it's so true i've never seen anyone do it in quite the same way as him it's really funny and light-hearted but at the same time like super heavy important topics so um i watched another video of him talking about some of his sculptures like these big i think he calls them wings or something and he said it has no meaning behind it whatsoever. It's just absurd. So he's got a little Dada in him, too. <laughs> got to appreciate that fact about him. <laughs>